The military political leadership of Russia is satisfied with the huge losses on the front in Ukraine. Moscow categorically refuses to improve the situation with tactical medicine on the front. This was stated by the Ukrainian collaborator, member of the far-right group, Club of Angry Patriots of the Russian Federation, Yuri Yevich. Yevich was extremely harsh in his remarks against Russian generals descending into insults. He noted that because of Moscow's position, a Russian soldier has almost no chance of surviving on the battlefield. I'll tell you about tactical medicine, battlefield medicine. The lion's share of the seriously wounded die before reaching the hospital. First aid is needed on the battlefield. We've been saying for 10 years, since 2014, since the war in Donbass, that we're not doing shit. A bunch of officials from the Ministry of Defense and all sorts of other departments said they haven't done a damn thing. The war started in February 2022. We offered a ready-made, tested on a bunch of troops, training method. No one wanted to implement it. They offered it for free. Thieves, scoundrels. You don't know how to do it yourself. Just take what's ready. They didn't want to, Yevich shouted. Military medicine is a largely overlooked contributor to military effectiveness, but its effects are playing out in real time on the battlefield. From better field sanitation to mechanized and air evacuation, as well as modern body armor, armies today that take advantage of these changes can not only save lives, but also preserve the strength of their forces. By all accounts, Ukraine has much better military medicine than Russia. Ukrainian forces, for example, are well-trained in tactical combat casualty care, a set of pre-hospital guidelines developed by the US military in the 1990s and revised and widely adopted in the early years of the Afghanistan and Iraq wars. US military medical practitioners found that 87% of preventable battle deaths occurred in the pre-hospital setting. Among these, the most by far were dying from hemorrhage. Thus, the Tactical Combat Casualty Care Guidelines focus heavily on hemorrhage with advice on when to apply tourniquets, hemostatic dressings and clamps to stem blood loss. Aid from the West has included exactly these type of supplies as well as related equipment such as body armor. Western advisors have also been pushing for the use of whole blood in far forward settings. One reason for Ukraine's medical advantage is that it has welcomed such aid not just since this February, but over the past eight years. Since the invasion of Crimea in 2014, Ukraine has been prepping for all-out war with Russia, including on the medical front. Russian forces, on the other hand, lack medical training as well as supplies. The US and UK governments are discussing allowing Ukraine to deploy British cruise missiles backed by US navigation data to launch long-range strikes on Russian territory, Bloomberg sources say. The issue is part of conversations that have taken place over the past few days as US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has held talks in London and Kyiv, the sources said. The US and Britain have signaled this week that they are open to Ukraine's request to strengthen its ability to strike deep into Russia. As Kyiv pushes for more powerful Western weapons to hit military targets inside Russia, officials have been talking about whether the White House might give Ukraine permission to use British Storm Shadow missiles for cross-border attacks, the sources said. Storm Shadows fly close to the ground at high speed before reaching their targets, using a system that combines so-called inertial navigation with a global positioning system and terrain-following navigation, according to a fact sheet on the website of their manufacturer, MBDA. The GPS satellite navigation system is operated by the Pentagon, although it is also used for public purposes such as online driving directions. When used in complex operations, Storm Shadow missiles often rely on US-provided data to help them map terrain with a high degree of accuracy, according to people familiar with the matter who spoke on condition of anonymity. The Pentagon maintains close and ongoing dialogue with our allies, including the United Kingdom, to ensure that any coordination of military capabilities is consistent with our shared objectives and international law. Spokesman Charles Dietz said, Storm Shadows have already proven to be a highly effective weapon for Ukraine, accurately hitting well-defended targets in Russian-occupied territory, according to military analyst and former British Army officer Justin Crump. It is not surprising that Kyiv lobbied for their use on Russian territory, especially for targeting airfields used for glide bomb attacks, he said. He is confident that despite the measures taken by Moscow, strikes with the said missiles 
will make it difficult to provide military logistics, command and control, as well as air support. And even if Russian aircraft move further away from Ukraine's border to avoid the missile threat, they will still incur increased time and costs for each sortie to the front line. Matthew Saville, director of military science at the Rusi think tank, believes that lifting restrictions on long-range missile strikes on Russian territory will put Russia in a dilemma. Where to deploy its precious air defense assets, which in turn will make it easier for Ukrainian drones to pass through. He does not believe that Storm Shadow will turn the tide.